Hey everybody, welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. My name is Tiffany, and here on this channel, we're taking you along for all of the adventures here on the ranch. Please excuse the sound of my voice. I am feeling a little bit under the weather today. I have a sore throat, but that is not going to stop us from canning our soup. Today we are making um, chicken tortilla soup, but we're not. Um, of course, I can't stick to a recipe. Um, I'm getting this recipe off of um, Thrifty Chic Housewife. She did a video on this recipe and she altered it from where she got the recipe and I'm going to alter this one. Um, I'm not doing it with chicken, I'm doing it with beef. So it's kind of like a taco soup, I guess. Um, but I have almost everything that I need to go ahead and pursue her recipe, but I have changed it up a little bit. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. starting off with the broth. This is home canned lamb broth and the recipe calls for 12 cups. So I've done double that. I am doubling the recipe that is in the video. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this come up to heat. You can see there's still cold fat, um, room temperature fat just cruising around in there. So I'm going to let this come up to heat a little bit and we will start adding our ingredients. This is a really um, easy, dump it all in, let it mix together kind of a recipe. So I'm really excited for it. Um, it is supposed to be slightly spicy. We'll see how that turns out. And I do know that when it sits on the pantry shelf, it gets more spicy and the flavors get more intense. So that'll be fun to find out later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that cruise for a few minutes. Mm. Ooh, yummy, yummy. Our broth is starting to smell really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, start adding in the ingredients. Uh, like I said, this is a dump it all in, um, except for the meat kind of a thing. So it's gonna be really easy. First thing it calls for is black beans. The recipe says chipotle black beans. I don't have chipotle, I have regular. So we're gonna go with that. A single recipe calls for two cans, so I'm doing four since I am doubling our recipe today. probably use dried beans for this recipe, like if you wanted to soak them ahead of time, um, but I didn't think ahead of time, so we got the cans. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Next thing we're gonna add is our diced tomatoes. I believe that you could use Rotel instead of diced tomatoes, but um, we're just going with straight diced tomatoes at this point. The recipe, The recipe calls for six cups, so we're doing 12. Six cups of corn. You can use frozen corn. You could use dehydrated corn, so as long as you let it dehydrate long enough. Um, I'm using frozen corn. You can also use your fresh home canned corn if you wanted to. That'd be even better. That's five cups. Okay. Gotta open the other bag. We're getting pretty close to the top. That's getting pretty close to the top already, but I think we'll be okay. The next thing to do is add one large onion. So I have two large onions. Don't want it to splash on me. 
The recipe calls for one jalapeno. This is three jalapenos. And it calls for poblano peppers. I didn't see any at the store, so I grabbed the serrano peppers. Now, I will definitely link um, the original recipe that I'm basing this off of, but just keep in mind it is entirely uh, different than what I actually am ending up doing today. Um, but I will link the Thrifty Chic Housewife um, down below so you guys can check out her video. Oh, it's starting to look so good. Divine. The recipe does not call for mushrooms, but I have mushrooms in my fridge that I need to use, and so I figured I'd throw them in there, along with bell pepper that is not in the recipe. But I have it in my fridge, and I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to throw it on in there. This is one of those recipes where you can doctor it up quite a bit as long as you know that what you're putting in there is safe for canning. Um, you, can, you can explore with this recipe quite a lot actually, I think. So that's coming together nice. Now we're going to add our spices. The recipe calls for one teaspoon dried cilantro. So we're doing about two calls for one teaspoon of Mexican oregano. I did not find any at the store. I've looked at a couple stores locally and am not able to find it, but Google tells me that this guy is a good replacement. So we're gonna give it a go. And I'm doing two teaspoons. They are not level teaspoons. It's supposed to be one teaspoon of seasoned salt. I don't have seasoned salt, so I'm just using pink Himalayan sea salt. Just kidding. I just reread it. I'm supposed to do tablespoons. So we're going to increase that. I'm going to increase to three instead of two for the garlic powder because that's what I want to do. Smoked paprika. Smells amazing. Oh my gosh. It says two. I think I'm gonna actually end up with a little more than a double batch because of the amount of meat that I have. So I'm not too worried about it. recipe calls for one teaspoon of cumin, so we're going to do two heaping teaspoons. The recipe does not call for powdered or chopped dried onion, but I'm going to throw it in there because I want to. Get all this gloriousness mixed in here. I really love these soup recipes where you can just throw it all in and then while it's in the pressure canner, all the flavors meld even further. They're so good. Love having ready-made meals. In fact, last night um, we had some family members come over and nobody had prepared any food because it was such a last minute um, thing we were doing. So I was able to grab a couple of jars of a different soup off of the pantry shelf and feed four extra people last night. So I just love it. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and get this mess cleaned up. This is going to sit. I'm going to stick a lid on here. Hopefully the mushrooms don't stay at the top. But if they do, it's okay. When we're ladling them, I'll try to um, make sure each jar gets its own portion of everything. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put the lid on here, get cleaned up, get my jars ready. We're almost ready. While our soup is still melding together, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute our ground beef. I've already browned this. 
Um, this is beef that we harvested here from the ranch. And I'm just gonna see how many jars we end up with. This is six pounds. Um, and I'm gonna do two small canners. Um, that way we can do one with quarts and the other with pints. They have different times. So I'm gonna start with my seven quarts and my 10 pints and is it 10? It might be nine um, pints and see how that gets us. I might end up changing my mind, but we're going to start with that and see what it looks like. I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of ground beef in each of our pints. Doesn't look like a lot, but when you fill up the rest with the broth and all the veggies we put in there, I think it'll be pretty all right. This has been sit sitting for um, a few minutes. Uh, so, oops. So all of the liquid, there's a lot of fat and liquid. Um, it's mostly sunk to the bottom. So I am kind of staying at the top because I want to put the leftover juice into the broth um, for the soup. And I'm going to do exactly that in the quarts, and I'm going to do double. Please excuse my absent-mindedness today. Um, as I said, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so my brain's not functioning as well as I would like it to. actually have a reason for not putting the juices in. It's going to end up in there anyway, but that's just what I felt like doing. Okay, so we do have plenty of beef left over. You can see all the juices. Oh yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and stick with this number of jars and um, I'm gonna go ahead and disperse this amongst the other jars. So one more scoop for each, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick the rest of this <clears throat> into our soup and we will start ladling our soup after that. So I put the rest of our beef and our beef juice into our soup. It looks like it's pretty well mixed together. I don't wanna overcook our veggies, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off of the heat. I'm gonna go ahead and take our soup off of the heat and I need to get our canners warming up because our broth is hot, so our canners need to be hot as well. So I'm gonna get that switched around and I'll bring you back. Okay, so we have our canners going, both of them. I got a new canner, I'm so excited. I traded out for the first time yesterday. Um, so now I have two that are smaller, so I can put quarts in one and pints in the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our broth into our jars. One thing that's gonna be a little bit tricky with this is making sure that, making sure that I get a good mix of all of the veggies, because the mushrooms are at the top, the corn and the tomatoes are at the bottom. So I'm gonna do my best to mix it up and um, distribute it to each jar. I'm looking for one inch headspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and debubble first because I'm sure there's a lot of air trapped under there. Mix it all around. Ooh, that looks so good. Looks so good. Get that meat mixed around in there too. Yummy. Do one more with you here. Oh 
make sure that's still at one inch and it is. This is a very hearty soup. So I gotta make sure I disperse the broth into each jar as well. stir it every time because it's not yeah not mixing together so well in the pan in the pot right now okay debubble Look at this, you guys. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm add a teeny bit more, I suppose, just to be on the extra safe side. A couple of drizzles. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how we get these into the canner real quick and then I'm gonna fill up the rest of these because it might take a while for me to be able to get the each ingredients into each jar. So, so you can see that there's a lot of crud. Even though I was using the um, funnel, there's still a lot of leftovers on the rim there. So we wanna make sure we get all of that off don't want anything interfering with our lids. Do that. I'm using white distilled vinegar to cut through any grease that's on this rim. Oh, these jars are super hot. Good thing we got our canners going. So we're gonna make sure our lids are super clean. Put our lids on, not too tight, but not too loose. I think I showed you guys a little too loose a couple times and I've regretted that. So nice and finger tight, not fingertip tight, finger tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the canner, get all the rest of our jars done up and I'll bring you back and show you how our ratios actually ended up turning out. Okay, so when all is said and done, we ended up with nine quart jars. These are the last two. They're not in the canners, so that'll go in the canner later. Um, so I have seven quarts in my Presto, and I ended up with 19 pints, and that is going in the All-American. So they're both all set up. They are ready to go. They're going, and I am gonna go ahead and just let that process. Um, we are processing at 15 pounds of pressure for my elevation. Check your elevation for where you need to be. Um, and then also, I am processing these for 90 minutes for the quarts and 75 minutes for the pints because they have meat in them. So that's a general rule of thumb for soups, I believe. So we're gonna go ahead and just let these do their thing and I'll let you know how we make out at the end. That is looking mighty fine, if you ask me. You can see that there are various amounts of meat and the different ingredients. I did my best to try to figure out how to take a scoop from the bottom, which had most of the beans and corn, and in the middle, which had most of the tomatoes, and then on the top was the mushrooms and the peppers. I tried my best to um, distribute them to each jar, but oh well, it is what it is. But they are looking so good. And we have pretty darn clean water at the bottom. A little bit of fat particles, but not too bad. This, my friends, is how quickly a brand new canner can discolor. 
I do not have hard water and it's happening anyway. This is the second use in this canner. So if your canner gets uglyish looking on the inside, just know that it's normal. It happens. But I'm happy with the uh, clean water at the bottom. And we will talk to you guys in the morning. Hey guys, it is definitely not the next morning. I did not show you guys the results, but they were great results. I ended up with a bunch of pints of our taco soup. This is what it looks like after a while. My son has had a few of these and he says that they're absolutely delicious. I haven't tried it myself yet, but I'm definitely going to. So we do have a bunch of those here on our shelf and it was a great success in our canning adventure. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Hamakua Homestead. I will see you soon.